Our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian, is joining us now. Uh, Armin, we're awaiting a news conference here coming up in about an hour. What are you looking for? What are we expecting to hear? Well, uh, I'm looking to see whether the emphasis is going to be on weapons transfers to Ukraine or whether it will be on trying to restart negotiations with Russia, because those are really kind of the two main scenarios. And I think listening to President Macron in uh, Romania on the first part of this trip, he was actually quite ambiguous about this. On the one hand, he says, yes, uh, Europe should help Ukraine to win. But most of what he was saying on that air base in Romania seemed to be about um, uh, not on the airbase, sorry, it was a press conference with the, the Romanian president, was about uh, coming to a peaceful solution to to the war. And uh, there was a very revealing interview to build the German tabloid, which a, a an advisor to the Ukrainian president gave, Alexei Aristovich, and he says, uh, I'm afraid they will try to achieve a Minsk three ceasefire deal. They will say that we need to end the war that is causing food problems and economic problems, that Russian and, and Ukrainians are dying, that we need to save Putin's face. Uh, so th- that is clearly a concern among some, you know, within the circles around President Zelensky, that perhaps these leaders will put the emphasis on, look, uh, there are going to be major problems in the world Uh, food supply chain and so forth. Therefore, you have to start talking to Russia again, whereas obviously what Ukrainian officials want to hear is uh, an unequivocal endorsement of their need for uh, more military support now because of what's happening in the Donbass. Well, we're already hearing reaction from the Kremlin to this visit. Um, The Kremlin is saying that deliveries from the West of weapons are useless. How is the Kremlin uh, viewing this visit? Uh, it, you know, it's hard to say because there have been mixed signals from the Kremlin on this question over over uh, several weeks. You know, sometimes a, uh, an official will say that these Western weapons don't change anything for uh, Russia's plans, that they won't have any impact. On the other hand, occasionally there are other officials who say, oh, no, you know, that this is going to prolong the war and it's a bad thing, and especially that long-range weapons uh, are very, you know, dangerous thing to add to the war. But so I think there have been some very mixed uh, uh, mixed messaging on that question. Uh, what is for sure is that uh, in the light of what uh, U.S. officials announced in Brussels yesterday, this big new military aid package, including heavy artillery, which is what Ukrainians have been asking for. They keep asking for artillery parity with the Russian army. Uh, That, in the light of that new U.S. commitment, uh, then it's obvious that Russia will try to make as much progress as it can now in Severodonetsk and in the Luhansk region uh, before possibly uh, those U.S. weapons start to make their presence felt on the battlefield, which would be within maybe six or seven weeks or so, according to military analysts. Uh, but let's just take a listen to Alexei Chernyshov, the Ukrainian Minister for Communities and Territorial Development, explaining uh, what, according to uh, the Ukrainian government, is the absolute uh, urgency uh, and emergency even in the Donbass right now. And this was uh, a soundbite that came from our, our own reporters in Ukraine. I think it's absolutely clear uh, that uh, the, the fate of the war is currently on its decisive phase on the east, on the Donbass, in Lugansk and Donetsk region, and others on the, in the south. We clearly understand that Ukraine is in a position to expect more military support, more heavy weapons, in order to have this uh, resilience as effective as possible. And we are now on soil. We defend our own soil, and in this regard, we were asking for this assistance. Okay, our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian, with some analysis there. Uh, Armin, thanks so much. Thank you.